In this video we're going to assume that there are only two stocks in the world. There's ExxonMobil and there's Apple. And we found the return for Apple to be 30.5%. This is our expected return. And we found the variance of Apple to be 6.55. We take the square root of that to get the standard deviation. So here we have the risk and return for Apple. And for ExxonMobil, its expected return is 9.98. Its risk is 2.53. That's the variance. So the square root of that will give it standard deviation. So that's the risk and return for ExxonMobil. This number is the covariance. That tells me the relationship. So now I have the risk, return, and relationship for Exxon and Apple. And I'm able to draw this line. Well, exactly how do I do that? Well, I need a couple of uh, formulas first for a portfolio. So I'm forming a portfolio here. This is 100% Exxon. This is 100% Apple. So as I go down this line, I'm 90% Apple, 10% Exxon, 80% Apple, 20% Exxon. And I keep doing that. So all I want to do is just draw that line. So I have two things I'll say here. One, the return for a portfolio is equal to, and with just two assets, the weight of Apple, A for Apple, times the return on Apple, plus the weight in Exxon times the return on Exxon. So I know that the return for Apple, 0 0.3050 times the weight of Apple, plus for Exxon, 0 .00998, 0 0.0998 times the weight of Exxon. So as I vary those weights, that's going to give me uh, the return for that portfolio. Well, the volatility for the portfolio, sigma squared, is going to be equal to the weight in the first asset, which is going to be Apple, I square that, times its variance. And remember, by the way, that sigma squared of asset 1, or not, I won't put 1, let's say sigma squared of x, that is the variance of exon, or x, sigma subscript x is equal to the standard deviation of x, and sigma x comma a is equal to the covariance covariance of x with a. So just get those terms down. So that's why I'm using the measure risk. So the weight of Apple squared times this risk plus the weight of Exxon squared times a measure of its risk. That should be an x. So here we have the risk of the portfolio is a function of the risk of the first asset times how much I have in there plus the risk of the second asset. Well, there's one more component. It's, it's not just risk. It's risk and relationship. So 2 times the weight of X times the weight of Apple times the covariance of Exxon with Apple. So here I have um, the variance of Apple. 0.0655 times its weight squared plus the variance of Exxon 0.0253 times the weight I put in it squared plus 2 times the covariance 0 0.00123 times the weight of X times the weight of Apple. So if I change the weight of Apple here I get the, uh, the variance of the portfolio. If I take the square root of both sides, I get the volatility or the volatility or standard deviation, whichever term you want to use. And that gives me the risk of the portfolio at the different points in time. So all I want to do with this is just pick points. I'll say here's the weight of Apple. Here's the weight of Exxon. And we just pick points. Like if I'm 100% Apple, I'm 0% Exxon because I know... I'll put this over here. The amount I put in Apple plus the amount I put in Exxon is equal to 100% of my portfolio. So I don't know what points to put. This is like graphing in high school. You just pick whatever points you want to have. And maybe I'll do this in uh, 60 and 40 and 40 and 60 and 
20% Apple and 80% Exxon and then no Apple and 100% Exxon. So I just take those points and then I need to come here and say, well, the volatility of my portfolio and the return of my portfolio that matches up with this. So I'll say, well, let me take this one, put it into here and this zero, 0, 0.0, it's like a little smiley face in it, 0, 0.0, put that into here and same thing, just substitute in at each point. And that's going to give me a return for the portfolio it's going to give me a volatility for the portfolio and I'll just have a dot there 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 however many dots I have one two three four five six dots so one two three four five six and just connect those dots the more dots the better right so um, maybe I want to have more on a piece of paper having six is that's a lot of work in Excel it's not very much work last thing I could have negative I don't have to have these numbers be positive all the time. If I'm allowed to short an asset, then, and if you don't know that term about shorting an asset, you need to learn that um, from some other source for right now. But I could have a negative weight that just means I'm short that particular stock. So that's how, on a piece of paper, I would draw this envelope of portfolios. And whatever point this is, this is about the minimum variance point. Everything above that, again, that's the efficient frontier. That's where I would want to invest because there's no way I want to invest down here. So if that drew all on around some more, I wouldn't want to invest down here because for this amount of risk, I could get a greater return. So I want to get the most return possible for the risk I take. Or I want to get the least risk possible for the return I want to get.